Hey everyone, recently I shot my very first USPSA match. While it was a blast, it showed me one very glaring thing about my own shooting, even though I've been shooting for over 30 years, shooting handguns, it showed me one very glaring thing, that I basically sucked. Dang. Yeah, I sucked. With what you need, the, the agility, the quick thinking, the quick acquisition of your targets, uh, the quick trigger pulls, it's nothing like any form of static shooting, no matter how good you are at shooting at a gun range, just doing standard static shooting. So with the current obvious ammo shortage, the amount of practice that I need to get any better is going to require quite a few trigger pulls. So what I decided to do, and I'm sure this has been done a million times, I'm just doing this my way. And believe me, I am not an expert. I am not an expert. This is what I decided to do on my own, on my budget, because I'm sure there's more expensive ways to practice than what I'm about to show you. This is what I decided to do with what I either had access to or could go get at a relatively decent price. I'm going to put together my own backyard shooting. I purchased an airsoft gun. Now, I'm not an airsofter, so all you airsoft, I don't want to say geeks because I don't mean that because now I guess technically I'm an airsoft geek, but all you airsoft experts out there, Go to another video. This is not the video that you want to watch. Airsoft gun was 129 bucks online, a thousand rounds, or I forget how many it is, six or seven bucks. Green gas is relatively inexpensive. You can use propane as long as you inject the silicone in there to keep the internals of your airsoft gun relatively lubricated. But overall, especially comparing it to a handgun shooting live rounds, it's extremely inexpensive. You don't get the recall or the muzzle flip that you would have, obviously, shooting a live round, but you get everything else. So what I want to do is set up my own targets that I can shoot in my backyard in the city limits and not have anybody freaking out, although they'll probably still freak out, with some, really, some pretty inexpensive things. What I've got here is I have a handful of PVC, uh, three-quarter inch PVC. I've got some T's and some 90's. I've got some ratcheting clamps right here, eight of them. I'm going to build two targets. And I've got uh, four joints of three-quarter inch PVC pipe also. I also have um, a, an old target here that I've been shooting at. You can buy these. You can get a hundred of these for like 15 bucks. They're paper targets, but they're, they have the USPSA uh, IPSA little outline on them. I'm going to use that as my template to show me how wide I want to make my targets. Um, obviously, you want to make your target shoulder length, or shoulder height rather. So I'm going to be doing that. That's, that's already going to set my height, but this is going to set my width of my target. Very inexpensive. Uh, you see these items on here. Um, not expensive at all. I mean, this is something that if I can accomplish what I'm setting out to do, it's going to be pretty inexpensive as far as practicing versus trying to go to the gun range. And in most cases, gun ranges, you can't practice USPSA type shooting. You can only shoot static shots anyway. So from the action standpoint of it, or the practical shooting standpoint of it, I'll be able to accomplish this in my very own backyard. So I'm going to get started on this, I'm going to put it together, and then we're going to take it out in the backyard and see if I can freak some of my neighbors out by firing this a few times uh, in a safe position in my backyard where maybe my shop or my house or my fence can back it up and not send any of those little plastic pellets over the fence in anybody's backyard or in a swimming pool or anything like that. Well, we got two of these bad boys made up. Took us probably about 35 minutes total. I actually had miscounted my 90s here. I was six short, so I had to run back to the lumber store to grab uh, six more. But all in all, as far as cutting time, it took, again, maybe 35 minutes. And that was with a hacksaw. Uh, all of you plumbing ninjas out there, you probably got something that'll cut through it a lot quicker than that. A uh, hacksaw cutting through three quarter inch PVC goes pretty quick anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I hand fit all these, I didn't glue any of them. Uh, I may glue them uh, because of the way they're put together. They hand fit just fine. They fit nice and tight. I did that in case I ever want to break them down uh, and, and haul them somewhere. What I may do is go ahead and glue the bottoms of it since they lay flat anyway and just hand fit these tops as they fit into the base of it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it's necessary. Man, I didn't need to glue them at all. It's probably in, uh, only a high wind situation. If the wind's too high anyway, you're not going to be able to keep the paper on here. So I don't see that that's going to be totally necessary. But let's take these suckers out in the backyard and see what we can do. Okay, as you can see, I have both of my targets set up here. I've got one about five yards further back than this one right here. As you can see, I put my, my clamps on here. 
I rolled, it was able, I guess, wide enough and long enough that I was able to roll the paper back on the back side and hold it from the back too, so that it's actually holding, clamping around the PVC pipe on the bottom as well. Just, it's on, on the side, obviously, here. Um, what I did was, um, in case you're going to use, say, a cardboard USPSA cutout, I assume that these letters, these uh, lines, rather, right here, pretty much determined where that, this is, I'm assuming this is the right size, is what I'm saying. So I made this thing a little bit narrower than the paper, so that if I ever wanted to use a piece of cardboard, which I plan to, uh, it would also fit. It's just a matter of wrapping the paper around. Uh, we wouldn't want it to be too wide so that you couldn't reach the cardboard with these particular clamps. So that, that's why this is done like this, a little bit narrow for the paper, uh, again, to accommodate the cardboard later on. I wanted to show you uh, LET, Law Enforcement Targets Incorporated, Targeting for a Safer America. Uh, you can get a whole box of these things. Uh, 50 of them, I believe. 50, uh, I'm pretty sure it's 50. For like $15 or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, anyway, relatively cheap. You'll notice we've got houses in the far background on each side over here, but I have these, these targets are backed up with my shop in my backyard. So if it hits anything, it's not gonna hurt anything, obviously, because it's just a little plastic pellet, but nevertheless, it's not gonna go into anybody's yard unless, which is quite possible, a really bad shooter uh, happens to totally miss that target and swing it over the fence over there. Uh, unlikely, but again, considering the operator of the weapon, it's, it's possible. So uh, anyway, trying to keep safety in mind, uh, kids in some of these yards, and I don't want these pellets flying over and hitting them, even though obviously it's not gonna hurt them, but if it hits somebody in the eye or something like that, I mean, it, it, could, it, it could irritate somebody. Uh, nevertheless, it can be done in your backyard, but I recommend backing it up with something, whether it's your house, uh, or a shop in my case or something like that or even your wooden fence because um, these things are low enough to where a six foot wood, wooden fence would still be higher than the actual target so uh, let's see how they work okay I've got my airsoft gun here this gun I purchased this particular style on purpose because I have an STI edge on order that's the same basic 2011 style as this with the flared magwell and uh, basically the whole setup looks the same except for it shoots big name bullets so uh, that's why I have this particular style right here um, they make tons of them. Um, you can get really cheap ones. I just wanted to get one that would last a while because this, if this works and it seems to be effective and helpful, I intend to use this gun quite a bit to practice here in my backyard. I've got a magazine full of pellets. Uh, we're good on gas, so let's see how this thing works. Let's try that again. Not bad, this target right here, I was probably only a few yards from it. So uh, not a hard shot, uh, <laughs> still got a C. Uh, nevertheless, it, it seemed to work pretty good. Um, giving you those distances between the two, these two targets are five yards apart. So uh, you notice my hesitation on my second shot, because it my second target rather, because it's not quite as close and takes a little bit more, I guess, uh, time to engage that target. So pretty cool, I'm gonna use these things quite a bit. Uh, may show some video later on of me uh, moving around a little bit more instead of shooting a static shot like that. But I just wanted to show how cool these things were set up and how they are, they're somewhat functional and intend on wearing these things out. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai.